Okay, so on our previous sessions, uh, we'll get started now. Uh, so on our previous session, uh, we are learning about Angular services. And we already used a couple of inbuilt services like dollar HTTP we've used to communicate with the uh, backend API. And then yesterday we used one more dollar interval services in our application. Okay. So today we'll learn a few more inbuilt services. So there is an inbuilt services called dollar lock. So this dollar lock service also uh, we can use in our application. So this is a simple service for locking. Like we use console dot lock, right? Every time you have to lock on the console window. Similar way we can use a dollar lock service also to uh, do uh, the same operation. So using dollar log services is pretty easy. So if we go back to our application in code, uh, okay, this is uh, script.js. So in the script.js, what I have to do, I have to just do dollar log. Okay, okay, let's say on, so get user, this guy. Here I want to log something, so here I log dollar log dot info so dollar log is having a couple of methods like info error warning so I so based on that it's like what you want to print let's say we want to print the information info so we'll use dollar log dot info then we'll say searching user plus scope dot user so this will log this. That's all. If we go back to our Chrome, where we are running the application, we'll reload this guy. We'll open the command. Sorry, the developer tool. We'll go to the console window. We'll do search. You can see we got uh, information saying searching user Angular. So that's happened because of the log and we have used info. That's why we can see uh, I symbol over here. That's nothing but info. Okay, so this is how we can use a dollar log service. And this is having a couple of methods like warn, error, debug, log itself. So we can use all of this. Then uh, there is one more services is there that is uh, UI related service like dollar location, dollar window, dollar animate, dollar anchor scroll, dollar one like this. There are so many services are there. Uh, I have shown you uh, so to see all the services. What you can do, you can go back to. Uh, you can always open the Angular JS daughter. Go to the develop API reference. And here you can scroll down at the left side, and these all services are there. And out of this, we have learned a couple of, and two more services we'll see and we'll use. So we'll use anchor scroll and location service. So what currently is happening in our application? Uh, let's say my application window is small let's say my application window is this much if I search search has happened but I'm not able to see the result right I might assume the search has not happened but if it's gone down okay I can see oh, okay I have already got the result if so I'll show you again if my application window is this much small and if I did a search, I might got the result, but it looks like nothing is happening. I'm still seeing that screen where the counter and the text box and the search button is there. But if I scroll down, I see, okay, the result is there, right? So how to fix this? So what we'll do when search and result come, we'll just scroll it automatically a bit to the top. So to achieve that, we'll go back to our code 
and we'll introduce two more services over here. One will use interval service and oh sorry not the interval service. Uh, one will use dollar location service and other we are going to use anchor scroll. The anchor scroll uh, service. Okay. So with this two service, now we can achieve this. Uh, what we'll do, uh, we'll introduce an ID over here to this. Uh, because what we have to do when we'll get this, this entire div has to come up at the viewable area, viewable area, right? So I'll give them this ID as user info, right? And Go back to script.js and we're getting the repos. Okay, in this got repos is a method where we confirm that we got all the repositories. Right? We 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 which uh, after that we bind the data to the table. So once we got this, what we'll do? It's simple two line. We'll just add. I'll say dollar location dot hash. So hash is a method. In dollar location service and I'll say go to this dollar location hash what it does it look for this ID in my HTML that is user info and once I it looks for that ID I'll just say anchor scroll it's a dollar anchor scroll I'll say just anchor scroll method. And you can see this service doesn't have any method. This itself acts like a method. That's why I have different different type of services. So this service is having a method called hash. But this service doesn't have method. It's itself is act as a method. That's all too late. So I'm looking for this ID and when I get that ID, I'm saying scroll up to that ID. That's all. Then if I'll go back to Chrome, I have made the Chrome as a smaller viewable area. I'll reload the code. And I'll search it. Now you can see it's scroll a bit so that I am I am able to see now this name, Angular, repo and some image so that I'll scroll and I can see others. If you want to see it again. Let's say I hit search, you can see it scroll automatically up. I'll load it again. I hit the search, you can see it, it automatically search a bit. It automatically scrolls a bit. And this also we can see. You can see it's automatically scrolls. So that's achieved because of those two services what we added. Okay, so with that, uh, we have used a couple of uh, inbuilt services in our application. And now we'll move to custom service. How we can build a custom service? Custom service means writing my own service. So writing a service is pretty easy. So we use a factory method to do that. So I have to register so factory method used to register a function with Angular so that it can be injected in another component. Like for creating a controller, we use controller method, right? We we use module uh, instance dot controller. If you remember, I go back to code. And if you can see, this is a line by which we created a controller. So app is nothing but an instance of the module which have created the line number five. Angular dot module module name and blank array which returns me an instance of my module and in, on that instance I call dot controller and pass a controller name and then the function which holding the logic of that controller simple it's a similar way I can have a factory method the first parameter I'll pass the factory name or the service name and next is a function name which holds the logic of that service. 
Okay, so that's pretty much easy to create a service. So we'll go back and we'll create our own service. So what we'll do in our code, if we see everything is there in our inscript.js, all the code. So let's say we'll find out some common code. So let's say what we'll do, the, all the service calls, like the actual backend calls, right? where we get the data, those two calls will move to our own service so that it can be used across the controller. If in future if I uh, enhance this application more and I'll add more controller then also I can use those code rather than repeating it again. Okay, so what we'll do, we'll add a file and we'll name it as github.js the file name we gave as a github.js <coughs> and what we'll do first we'll write a ify because we don't want to expose any global variable done and in that what we'll do will take a instance of that module, right? Okay, so we'll take an instance where module equal to angular module main module. So this is how you take an instance. But you see this is code, I have given the second parameter also. So here I have taken the instance as well as I am uh, creating the module also. But here I don't have to create the module because module creation is already done. I just have to take the instance. So because of that, I just give a name var module, angular module equal to mean module. You can give a name as var app also. That's also fine. Okay. So I have to just taken the instance of that and then I have to register a service. So I have to say module dot factory is a method which helps us to create the service then we'll give a name to the service. Let's say we'll give a name as GitHub. That's what my service name is. Then a function name which will hold the logic. Let's say I'll create a function also with the same name. That is GitHub. Generally we uh, follow this practice. So whatever the service name is there, we give the function name also same so that uh, it's much more easier. It's for readability purpose. You can give other name the function also. Okay, so that's done. So now we'll create that function where GitHub equal to function. Okay, so what logic we'll put? So the two calls, right, in the script.js, what is that? One is line number 45 where we are calling the first backend API that is api.github.com slash user slash any username like angular and the second one is this line number 35 where we hit one more URL again to get back all the repository details. So this two service call uh, which is happening uh, will move that to our github.js to our own service. Okay, so we'll give them a name like get user equal to function. So this is a function which will get me the user. Okay. And then I'll have one more function that's get repos. Which will give me all the repositories. Okay. And then I'll have a return because if you remember, I have uh, we have learned the what you can say uh, the module pattern, how to create module. When I was we are learning few JavaScript patterns before learning Angular. So what you can do when you create a module, you can have as many methods, anything inside as a private methods. But if you want to make it public, you have to return them. So I'm returning an literal object literal. And in that I want to 
expose these two methods. Right? So I can have as many as well, I am having two methods and both I am exposing, but as per the module pattern, you can have your internal logic as private and you can make public only the method names which you want to make public. So I made it public so that others can use this whoever want to call. That's all, pretty simple. Now the logic to create the user. And logic we have already know, it's already here, right? The same logic we have to put there only. So what I'll do, I'll just copy this line and I'll put it over here, right? So I have to do the same, http.get dollarscope.username. But now in uh, services, there is no meaning of dollar scope dot username, right? There is nothing called uh, dollar scope dot username uh, in uh, services. So what I have to do, select so this dollar scope, right, which was here. So this dollar scope is only understood in controller. Here there is, because here the dollar scope we have injected and that's only injection can be done in controller. In services, you can inject dollar scope. So what I'll do, I'll leave this all. I'll just make it username, and here I'll I'll expect that I'll get a username. So that when I do a call from controller, I'll get this username. So I'll pass the username from there. I'll get it and do. It. And I have to return this. Right? Because whoever will call, I have to return the response. Okay. So this is one thing uh, done and instead of that now I'll go to the get here in the script is instead of using this now what I can use I can use get user because that's a method name and I'll use github dot get user okay so github is my service name right and with and I can pass the scope dot username to that simple so what I did I send that logic to there and now I'm calling github dot get user and this github with any service we have to use I have to inject it first right you can see we have injected so many services so this is also inbuilt service so I have to inject it because so that's a service name you can see this is what the service name I've given and so I injected it over here and now I'm using it and you can see we have used others and here we are using this dollar HTTP service means I have to uh, get it this somewhere right So I have to get this dollar HTTP, so I have to inject over here. Similar way, like here how we are, how we are injecting uh, the services. In my controller function we are injecting dollar HTTP service to get take use of. So now I have moved that to my service logic, so I will inject dollar HTTP over here so that I have to use it. And I have my own service GitHub and that I injected over here now and used it. So you might think that the similar kind of services the Angular team also much have done, right? When they have also created this dollar HTTP, you can now correlate that, okay? So they also have a method like get and they must have exposed it like this. So same way they have also developed their dollar HTTP services and all other services, similar way, similar way they must have written. Okay, so this is <laughs> one way how you can now we are using our own github get user rather than uh, rather than what <clears throat> rather than uh, directly using the HTTP and one more thing what we'll do after this 
I can have a then over here also. So because it's a promise, right? So when I'll do like this, first time it will return a promise. Because this call directly will not give you the data. That's what it's asynchronous call. You know, right? Asynchronous. I will give an example of a restaurant. If you go to a restaurant, if you ask for a burger, it just give a chit. And then you wait for some time. And once your burger is ready, you show them the chit or the bill and they give you the burger. The same happens here. When you do a backend service call, you will not get data immediately. So it will return you a promise. So this return is for returning that promise. Whoever will call get user. And once after three seconds, four seconds, you get the data, then you will send them the data as well. So on this promise, now we have registered uh, this functions on success and on error. So based on if you get a bugger or you don't get a bugger, you these two functions will get caught. Similar we will have dot then over here also. And in the, this start then, if I got the response, I'll execute this. And here, instead of returning the entire response, my controller is only responsible for data. If you remember, the response returns so many things. The status, the header, information, the request object, so many. But I am only interested in the data. So what I'll do, here I'll receive the response and I'll just return response.data. That's all. You can return the entire response also, but now you have a luxury because you have own service. So you can control at one label and you can decide what you want to send. So here in my this on success, Instead of now receiving the entire response, I just receive the data because from there I am sending just the data. So instead of receiving a response, I'll just say data, and instead of saying response to data, I'll just use data. Make sense? Yeah. So one service call is implemented, and we have created uh, that get user. And if I go back to, so this is kind of incremental code, right? And if I refresh this, oops, something went wrong. I can see what, oh, okay, I got it what went wrong. So we added a new JavaScript file, right? But we have not put it in index.html. So any file which you add, you have to put it in index.html, otherwise that file will not get loaded. So I did that. Now it should get my github.js file. Okay, now I did a search. Okay, you can see the application still works fine. And we have introduced our own service now. And application still works the same way because we have not changed anything to the functionality. What we did only, we created our own service called GitHub service and we moved the logic where we are connecting with a backend API to get information about GitHub user. And from there now we are returning just the data. And with the script.js, now I am calling directly the github.get user and passing in the username and rest everything is same. Only this line I modified, right? In this line before, entire this line was there. And here I am just returning the entire, instead of entire response, I am just returning the response dot data because my controller is only responsible, only interested in data, not the entire response. That's all. Now one more call is there, right? This call. So now we have to get rid of this call also. So to get rid of this call, how we'll do, I'll just copy this guy from here and I'll put it over here, right? And I'll put a return statement before that because I have to return a promise first. Obviously, the dollar scope will not work here. So instead of dollar scope, I'll remove the dollar scope 
and I'll assume it has to be user dot repo URL and I should assume that whoever will call this method he will pass me the user simple right and then similar way I'll have a dot then over here and here also I don't have to send the entire response I can filter it one more label and I can just send only the response dot data because my controller is only interested in response dot data. Done. Similar way it's done. Now get repos. Now I have to implement it. Oops. So now I'll copy this. I'll go to the script.js. Here instead of doing all http dot get, I'll call get repos github dot get repos. Okay, and I'll pass him the scope dot user. Okay, rest everything same. Then in the got repos instead of response, now I'm getting the data. So instead of this response, I just got the data. Done. Everything is cool now. You can see the small changes I've done. I just did a change here, line number 35. Then in the got repos, instead of actually getting the response, I'm just getting the data. So I just assign this repos with data. Now I'll we'll go back to my browser. I will reload the code and we'll search. Oops, something got went wrong. So I am not getting my table. You can see it's written something has went wrong. It's saying the response is not defined in GitHub JS 14, line number 14. Okay, we got it. So I'll go back to code. I, I got to know what a mistake we did. Go to the GitHub JavaScript. So instead of here, you can see I've written a function, but I'm not receiving the response. Okay. Now we'll go back to Chrome. We reload our application. So that's why the developer tool is very, uh, it works as it is. So that's why the developer tool is very good. Anytime you got an error, you open the console and see what the error is coming. Come back to code, fix it, and rerun. And our application works fine. And we can go to code, and you can see now instead of, uh, we have created our own service. We name it as a GitHub, dot, GitHub service. And controller, we have injected that service and we have used it. And now in this, we don't need this dollar HTTP, so I can remove this dollar HTTP from here. Because that dollar HTTP is getting used now in GitHub.js. Cool. So this is how you create your own service, inject in controller and use it. Now if you add one more controller, you don't have to repeat this logic, entire logic what we have written in the GitHub.disk. Just you inject github service into your that controller and start using these two methods get user and get reports okay now we'll go back to a slide and what's the summary uh, we have learned in services so services as barrier means we can make our controller and model free from complexity so that it can be easier to test now I see our controller is removed of that logic where I was connecting with a backend API and all so that's is taken care by my service code now so service can be used as a component and same component can be used across app and services used for custom logic right so these are the things uh, what we did and we created our own service to make our application simpler okay so just give me a moment, I'll share the another slide that is on routing. So next we'll learn a routing. What is a routing in AngularJS or in general also. Now first we'll learn single page application. What is single page application? 
so or we in short we call it as a SPA single page application so single page uh, doesn't mean that it's not a collection of pages your application only will have have one page uh, or one HTML file or one JavaScript file that's not correct so single page means your view will be looks like a single page and if you consider uh, uh, so so your what you can say your header your footer is not going to change in your single page application every time the inside view will keep on changing so that's a kind of a single page application like gmail is one of the biggest single page application if you remember how the gmail looks like in your gmail everything at the top the side looks same right you click on inbox your view will be same only in between your let's say you are on inbox and now you click on send items so what happens everything will be same only instead of inbox messages now you see your send items or you click on a draft instead of everything else you only see a draft message now or you click on uh, chunk or you click on delete item a deleted item that's trash what happens nothing gets changed everything remains same on the top on the sidebar on the right left bottom everything remains same only the inside content gets changed so that kind of application is called single page application and what are not single page application let's say if you click something and it make your application entire white and then navigate to an entire different looking page then that's obviously not a single page application so if you see this angular js right you see this header now what i'm doing i'm clicking on learn and i'm going to a case studies okay so now it completely load a different view right so in that way that portion is not single page so let's say instead of here API reference, I click the developer guide. You can see my header didn't change it. It's still same, only this content change. And here also it's the same view. And now let's say I click on the error reference. You can still see my header didn't change, my footer didn't change, but my the main view that got changed. So this is nothing but a single page application. So like Gmail is the biggest uh, single page application. Okay. So why we build a single page app? So what is not single page application is like when you click something, you might see some application where entire screen will get blank out and you get a new page repeat again. But in single page, that will happen. So header and footer will remain intact only the data got changed. So building a single page app, there are a couple of benefits like it reduce the round tripping. Round tripping means connecting with your uh, backend services. So it reduce that time. So you don't have to connect every time to your uh, backend API for each and every page. Only for the data, you have to connect, not for uh, on every click. So that's a benefit of having single page app. And it's works great in low bandwidth and offline mode also. So you offline mode suddenly you are clicking something. So that doesn't mean uh, if you are not in a single page application, what will happen? You suddenly will get a, a blue white screen, nothing is there and it's keep on loading slowly because of low bandwidth. But but if a single page application if you're offline also, you can still do the steps because every time it doesn't uh, connect with the backend services to get the data. And it's highly interactive. Like Facebook also is a single page app and you see how interactive it is. So you can keep on doing so many things here, right? You can click on likes. So when you click on likes or you click on uh, commenting on particular post, you might have seen when you submit that post, your entire page doesn't refresh it, only that portion gets submitted. You can still view everything else. 
Oh, so that's a kind of a highly interactive thing. And what is the characteristic of SPA? It will have a routing concept or a navigation rules, routing rules. And it will have a, a history and deep linking. Uh, history means uh, it can maintain a history of what uh, view you were there before and what view currently you are seeing, all these things. And it will just have a template views with data binding. So your template view remains same. Only we change the data, like Gmail, right? Your view remains same. Once we click in box or send items or junk, only the data got changed. Like we see a sent items or we see an inbox or messages or we see a junk messages. Only the data, that's the data got changed, but your view remains same. So AngularJS helps us to build a single page application. And AngularJS is nothing but it's a single page application for framework. And to make your application single page, we have to learn routing, how you can set routing rules and what is the routing. So what's the routing? So routing is actually allows us to manage multiple views on an application. So application can have multiple views, right? So it allows us to manage that. And it and in that rule we can and if you say a routing. A routing based on the URL. URL is uniform resource locator. And what is this uniform resource locator? All the URLs what we see in address bar, like google.com. That's a uniform resource locator, right? And that's what we call URL. So routing is based on URL. And in in our application also, you can see this is what the URL is. Localhost 8080 slash double hash username. And if you see this, you, this URL remains same, right? Dosh dot angular dot js dot org. And when you click on developer guide, you can see only the last portion got changed, slash guide. It remain this URL remains same. I click on error reference, you can see only the last portion got changed to error. Remain everything is same. So it's a uniform, but its base URL is always same. Only the last mm -hmm parameter got change. So we'll see uh, how to configure things like that. So what a routing does, routing, we can set a routing rules in our application. Like routing rules means we can say if application detects this URL, then I have to load this page. If routing detects this kind of URL, then I have to load this page with this data. So routing engine captures that request. So every time we change the URL, the routing engine got that request. Okay, something change and happen URL, then it check based on that URL, do we have set any rule or not? If yes, then it renders a response. That's how the routing works. So routing engine captures request and routing rules then renders a response. So like if we give an example of this Angular JS website, it might have set a rules where it says if you get in a route URL slash error, then you show this data, that is error reference data. If you if you got slash API, then you show this data where all these things are there. When you got slash guide, then you show this data. That's how they must have set their routing rules. So that's why whenever we are changing this URL, that's where whenever you're clicking, what might be happening? They are changing this URL because you have clicked on API reference, so they change this URL to slash API. And when they change this URL to the app API, a routing engine got to know that. And when routing engine got to know that, it checks his rules, whether anything has been configured for this URL or not. Yes, it's been configured. You have to show this data. 
with this kind of view then it loads that. That's how the routing works. And routing is not special in Angular only. Routing concept is there in other framework also. So now we learn how we can do that in Angular. It's not like that routing is new to Angular. Routing is a pretty old concept. It can be achieved in other framework as well. But now we'll see how we can do the same routing implement in uh, AngularJS. So now routing with Angular. So to do a routing with Angular, it depends on another module that's called angular-route.js. So as of now, if you see, we have only used one file that is angular.js, right, to uh, make use of Angular functionality. But to use a routing with Angular, we need one more file which you can download from angular.js website or you can get a URL which has been hosted in some server and uh, give that in your index.html to uh, use the feature of routers. And that file name is angular-route.ps, which provides a module called ng-route. The module name is ng-route. And this is how you can configure a routing rule. So to do that, we use a component of ng-route called route provider. That's a kind of a service, right? Similar way, we have used a dollar HTTP service or dollar log service. There is a service called route provider service which only comes with ng route module and that ng route module only will get when we'll include angular dash route dot js. Okay. So I'll come back to this page but before that if I go back to my code to have more sense you can see this line where we are just using uh, this uh, angular.js file, right? So if I have to use uh, routing, then I need one more file. That is angular route.js. So what we can do, I'll just copy that I have it, you can search over it also, uh, how you have got it, the previous one, right? Similar way we can have this route.js. If you, if you want to use the same version, you can use that as well, 2.28. Okay, and so we have done angular route.js file and then we have to go to our script.js and here you can see this field was blank and I was saying we will only put if we are dependent on some module. So now what's there, we are dependent on a module called ng-route. In that case, what you can do, you can have like this and you can put it in G route. So here all the module we put which we are dependent on. So now to use routing, we are dependent on a module called ng route. And now you can have it like this. And if you are not dependent, it will be blank. So when you define your module, then we have to mention this. That's all. This is the two things, then you can start using uh, uh, routing things. Okay, so <clears throat> to and this is what configuration we do. So we use a service called dollar provider and in the service there is a method called when and when takes two arguments. First is a your URL that is uniform resource locator and then there is an object and that object will have <clears throat> data like what view you want to load and what controller you want to load. So I'll say when my URL got changed to slash main, I want to load a HTML called main.html and main controller is having a logic to control that main.html. 
So this is how we do a configuration for a routing. And if you see this diagram, let's say I'm having two HTML files. One is user.html and one is report.html. And if you see our, if you think of our application, GitHub app, in that the two view is there, right? The first view where we see a input box and a search button. Right? And when you click on that, we got that angular image and the table. So that's nothing but our different well, second view. And the first view we see only text box and a search. Let's say for those two different view, we'll, we'll have two different HTML files. And we'll have some header, some footer, footer and this is the actual view area, the body. And in this like this I can set a routing rule and based on the routing I can decide which HTML file to load. That is nothing but a routing and single page application. Because my header and footers are same. What I am changing, I am just changing in between things. So based on condition I will I'll change my URL and if URL got changed I will have my routing rules and based on that rules my it will decide which view to load. Right? That's what your routing is in Angular. So currently what is there? Everything is there in our single view. Right? If you see everything is a single view. Although we got this data, we still see this input box and everything. So you can assume this application name is my header and from date, counter, input box search, this is my one view. And from where I because that's what will be there initially in my application, right? When I load it first time, this is my one view. And when I click on search, I got this entire thing. This is my second view. So what I can do, I can hide this first view and I can only load second view when I click on search. And that's what will happen in gmail.com. You will open, first it's ask for username and password. And when you give username and password and click on login, it loads you another view. It doesn't show you both the user login information and below all the inbox. That's not happens in actual application, right? So we should ideally also do the same thing. When you click on Angular, do a search, I'll hide that input box and button for you and I'll give you the result. And if you want a search again, we'll give you a back button. You click on back again, you go back to that search page and search for another user. Click on search button. Again, I'll hide those uh, input box button and I'll just show you the response, what it came, right, the image and the table. So if you want to achieve the same, we can do that also in the same application. So to do that, what we'll do, I'll introduce one more file that's called app.js and if you see any AngularJS application there will be a file called app.js and that file will be a first file which gets loaded automatically and in that file we do all the routing configuration. It's just a standard which people follow. You can name it anything but in Angular world the file where they configure all the routing rules and they uh, define their module and everything, they name it as app.js. And in the app.js, what we'll do, we'll write an iffy straight away. Okay, and inside that iffy, we'll create our module. So if you see, I, we, are, we are already creating module in script.js, so we'll copy this line and we'll put it over here. And this is how we can create a module and now we're dependent on ng route. So I have put that and on that instance app.config. So I have to use config as uh, a method we will do all the routing configuration and that config method takes one parameter that's a function. And in that function uh, like if we use any service, right, what we do, we inject it. So here we are going to use a service called route provider. So that we have injected it. Like if you see here, here we are using our HTTP, so we are injecting that. So we will inject route provider. And that route provider is having a method called when. 
dot win and this dot win is what actually helps us to configure the routing rules and this again takes two parameters the first one is a URL the uniform resource locator let's say I give a URL name is slash main so whenever I see a URL called slash main in my address bar what I'll do I have to say I want to load the template URL is main dot HTML and my controller should be main controller. Pretty simple, right? So it's pretty simple. So if I have to say if you see a URL called slash main, you load this template URL. It has to be this way. Okay, and then there is otherwise also there. If I say otherwise, if the URL is not this, then what it should load? I'll say redirect to otherwise redirect to what I'm doing I'm again redirecting to this one so, so that means whatever the URL you do on that address bar it finally going to load this main URL as of now because we have just one view so as we'll have more view uh, you, we can uh, have more routing rules and we can uh, Decide. But as of now, we are only having one view, main view. So we are saying if you are getting main, you get this. And if you are not, if you are getting anything else in the address bar, then also you would redirect to this uh, rule. That's all. So this is how you can set your routing uh, rules. And if you see, I don't have a main dot HTML file now. So let's say create a main dot HTML file. Simple and in this main.html file, what we'll keep. So in the index.html, there are so many things are there, right? So we'll just keep this much until this form. We will have message, uh, sorry, the today's date, counter, the error, and the form where we'll have input box and a search button. Only that, that much we'll have in our. Uh, main dot uh, HTML. So in the main dot HTML, I copy, I put it like this. We'll have a date, we'll have a counter, we'll have today's date, and we'll have a form. That's all. So from here, what you can do, you can copy this much, and you can create it. Okay. So that's our main.html. Then where is our main controller? Main controller is already there. If you see our three.js, this is what the main controller is there. But whenever we create a controller, we give a same name. So here the name is script.js, right? So we generally don't give that name. What we do, I'll copy this and I'll create a file called main controller.js. And here in the main controller.js, what we'll do, whatever the code we need, this entire main controller.js will copy over there. Okay? So I'll copy this entire main controller.js over there in my main controller.js. And here I'm not creating module, so I can only take a reference of that app dot angular dot module right and in this now we'll not do all the logics we just need a first input box and everything right so what all things will keep now and this sorting and all we don't need for this we'll create another controller and so I don't need this, I don't need this, I need a counter, that's fine, there's two things. I need a decrement 
counter obviously I need the counter endeavor and start counter obviously I need that I need I don't need get pause I don't need on success get user nothing I don't need anything else here. I just remove this everything so my now main controller is pretty much simple small right but I need the start counter somewhere I have to call the start counter that's all so that's what my main controller is and now in the index.html okay and I don't need uh, these all things also so what we'll do I'll I'll just take this entire thing and I'll dump it over here. Later we'll see what we can do with these things. I just dump that okay, for future use. In user info.html I have dumped it. And because I want to clean my index.html now. So in the .html I don't have to put this ng controller anymore, nothing. I don't need anything. In my body will now be simple. So in my body, I'll have a h1 where I'll give a name as GitHub app, and I'll have a div, and there is now one more directive which I'm going to use. That directive may be ng dash view. And what this directive does, this directive load that view based on your routing URL. So as per my routing URL, my view has to be main.html. So what index.html does, it loads that URL in, in this ng view. That's what it's all. So in my index.html, it's pretty simple now. I just have a header that's called GitHub app this is, or GitHub application. And I am having a div where I just use a directive ng view. And the job of ng view is just load the HTML as per your routing rule. And instead of now script.js, I load app.js. Okay. And I don't need as of now the github.js, but I need main controller.js. In the index.html, I use main controller.js. That's all. So I need app.js, I need main controller.js. I'm having main HTML already. So all things set for at least uh, for the first view. Because the first view need main controller.js that I'm having. Because it's saying controller main controller, which is main controller is um, main HTML I'm having, index.html lead and js and main controller this. That's all. Now if I go back to my application, it should work smoothly. So I just load this guy. You can see GitHub application, but something went wrong. I go back to inspect and see what's going It's saying unknown provider GitHub. Okay, so we we'll go back to our code. Okay, we have not done some cleanup on our controller. So we don't need uh, dollar interval we're using, dollar log we are not using, dollar location we're not using, and just call GitHub. And this GitHub it's not detecting because we have not included this GitHub.js. Anyway, I don't need uh, anything, so I'll just remove everything. That's all. I removed everything. Now I'll go back to application. So that's how the developer tool is helpful. It says what went wrong. I just reload this. That's all. This is our first view is done. My counter is working, but obviously when I hit search button, 
nothing is going to happen nothing is happening and you can see I'm getting a URL called slash main also over here but I'm getting something called slash user info also I'll see that why I'm getting that I can get rid of that as well oh, it's because it was there before yes this is my URL and I hit search button nothing is happening currently and you can see my URL is slash main now right and because of the slash main it's loading this page and if I give any other URL also here it redirect to main you can see oh sorry if I type anything else main h some I and if I hit it directly navigate me to slash main only because of my routing rule to see here in app.js that's what I said right anything else you got and then you redirect to slash main and that was is happening okay so now I need my uh, second view right so that's uh, user information and just take few more minutes we'll just have to rearrange our code to create one more controller then we'll done with the routing so when I click on that button search nothing was happening if you remember right so now what we'll do we'll add one more routing rule so here you can say one dot win again so this is a chaining of methods at the single service you can see I'm saying dot win dot win dot otherwise and without any semicolon that means I'm chaining this method so you can do a chaining or you can do a semicolon then you have to route it again route, route provider dot win which is not required so you can chain it and here I'll have one more URL which is a name is user slash if you have to have any variable or any parameter on your URL then you have to specify with colon so user slash colon username is this username value will change if it's angular my URL name will be user slash angular if it's jQuery, my URL name will be user slash jQuery. So this is a variable, username. That's why if you want to have a variable in your URL, then you have to configure like this. You have to use colon, then the variable name. So that's what I also did over here. And then the second parameter, that's uh, object literal. And again, we have to specify this to template URL and controller. So I'll have a template you are template name is user.html for if and I'll have a controller say user.controller. Cool. So if I get this URL in my address bar, then I load user.html and user controller is responsible for holding the logic which need for user.html. Okay. Simple. And we are already having one file called userinfo.html, right? So that I'll rename it to user.html. Done. And this user.html, if you remember, I have just dumped this guy. And now we'll rearrange the things. So I don't need this div include. Okay. And instead of this also I don't need and this whole thing already we put on our tag page so we only didn't need this much right div ng show and this uh, short order select box and label so I have one more cleaner view and just copy that which will be holding this much of but so we only need this much in my user.html okay now I don't I'll create user controller.js And what my user.controller.js will be have, we'll go to the script.js. So in the script.js, we only move few things which is required for my main controller, right? Uh, where I input box and counter and date. Other things I have not. So from the script.js, other like got repos, on success, get user, these all things I need my user controller.js. So I'll go back to user controller.js now. 
and I'm just pasting the code and then I'll explain what I'm doing because of uh, time limit we can't write it from scratch but we have nothing written from scratch because we have taken the code which was there in the script.js and put it in user controller.js what all code okay so first I have taken an instance of that module and on that instance I'm registering the controller okay so if I confuse with this I'll just remove for now this thing so and then the controller name right and I need dollar scope I need a github I need route parents okay I'll explain why I need route parents so I need dollar scope and github that's all just two services route parents I'll explain why I need and I can see everything is same I'm having this get user which was here the get user and in that get user function I was having this github dot get user right same thing it's there get user I'm getting scope I'm passing okay I'm calling github dot get user with this username and the same thing is here and on success is there on error is there got repo is there so this four method what we deleted from main controller that got repos, on success, on error, and get user. These four are here. So get user is not there because I'm directly having this line. Yeah, you can see. So as soon as this controller will get load, I'll call a GitHub dot user. So nothing new we have added. We have th taken the things from here. So what we have added and repo sort order which have removed from there, it's here. And what a new we have did scope dot username so if you see in my script dot js before scope dot username was by default angular right and later whatever we are changing we are getting that but how this controller will get to know what the username has been changed so what we will do so there is a route params is one service which helps us to get that username and what this route params is there whatever the parameter we pass to our URL, if I have to read that parameter, this is the parameter which I pass to URL, right? To read that parameter, I have to use route params. That's what the name was, say, route parameters. Route params. So route params dot username will have the value of this username. Cool? So that's why what I'm doing to get the username, I'm using that route params dot username. And based on that username, I'm calling github dot get user and rest all is same. So that's why I use this route params. Okay. To use this, so now I don't need script.js, so I can delete it. Everything is done. Few more minutes, we will be done with this. And in my index.html, what we'll do, we have to add github.js and we have to add user controller dot js okay done those two files we did now we have to create a link between these two so how to create a link between these two so when I click on search button I have to change the URL then only I can create a link. So when search button gets clicked, uh, what happened? Uh, this so when search button I think I'll have okay, it looks like we have removed one more method also. So when search button got clicked, we are having this right counter interval. So there I'll add this dollar location dot path. So this dollar location is again on service that we have already used before, right? In that there is a method called path. Before we have used a method called uh, hash. Now we are using a method called path. In that path, what I can do, I can change the path of the URL. That's the beauty. So when you click on the search button, if you remember this code was there, we just added this line now. The beauty is we can change the path of the URL. So I'm changing, sorry, we can change the URL. 
So I'm changing the URL from slash mail to slash user slash username and this username whatever he has entered. Once this URL got changed, suddenly my routing engine look for whether I'm having any routing rules for that one. Yes, I'm having a routing rules for that user slash any variable and where I have to load user.html. So suddenly it start loading user.html and user controller will load user controller. This line number 24 gets executed because it gets that username from route params, whatever has been updated in URL. I did the call and everything works fine as it is. So if we see that, we'll go back to our Chrome and we will reload our application. You can see now slash main is there. When I hit on search, you can see uh, it's been changed my URL to slash user slash angular. And now I am not seeing that input box and button. And I just saw name angular and the table, right? So this we have achieved because of routing. And how we have created a relation between two controller that you are nothing else. So whenever someone hits this search button, what I'm doing, I'm just updating the URL. Nothing else I did. When I did, I just updated the URL. And once the URL get updated, suddenly my routing route engine come into picture. And whenever any URL changes, route engine looks for the configuration. So when my URL changes, it suddenly looks for the configuration to look if I am matching anything with that URL or not. Yes, there is a rule matching with that URL. And when that rule match, it automatically loads this HTML and this control. And this all, everything happens so fast. That's why in a fraction of a second, we are seeing the another page. And when this user controller loads, everything is same because our code runs and this code we are aware of because we know we connect with a GitHub get user, it gives us the user data, then we connect with the get repos, we got the repos. Everything else works as it is. And we did so what extra thing we did, we added this line number twenty two, which was not there before, and we added this line number sixteen in main controller JS which is not there. So two things we just added after separating our logic. Everything was there in the script.js. We separated out based on the view and two extra things we added. One, how to change your URL. That's using dollar location path. How to read parameters from the URL. That's line number 22 using route params. Just that two line and our code is now well structured. If you look any Angular application which has been used in a production, not a uh, practice not a demo one, the production one, it will have this kind of structure. It will have app.js and for every view there will be a different controller. Now we are having main.html, the controller is main controller. We are having user.html, our controller is your controller.js. And we are having one service that is github.js, we are having one app.js where we have a routing configuration. So it's a proper application what we have built. So if you work on AngularJS in your companies, wherever you will join, this is how your application structure will be, you will find it. And then one thing is missing in our application, once we come to this page, I don't have a way to go back to my previous page until unless I have to use the browser back button. So we'll just add one line of code and I'll give a button to go back. So. So in the user.html, what I'll do, I'll just add one line at the town and that is I'll add one anchor tag where I'll give a href and what the URL I'll give, I'll just give a URL slash main. So I want to go back to a URL slash main again and I'll give it a name as back to search. Okay, makes sense. Back to search user. Now if I go back to our application, we'll reload this guy. 
You can see I am seeing one option called back to use search user at the down. So I can click on that. I will back here. If I have to change anything, I will change it to jQuery and enter search. And you can see back to search user is working here. Cool. So this is how uh, the application is full fledged application now. It's and um, if you want, you can enhance this. You can further do on click on this repository. You can have one more page. So when you click on this particular repo like Angular.js, you can show more details of that Angular. So that's a kind of enhancement more to this. So you can add a third view to that. So with this. Uh, that ends my today's session. Let me see if anything is there on this to say. Yeah, that's all. So this is how you can configure a route. You have to create a route, you have to create a template, you have to create a controller, then navigate to that route. That's all. So with that, uh, I'm done with today's session. And it's almost end of the Angular JS also. Maybe from uh, tomorrow, uh, one more thing is pending, which I'll talk about that. Is creating a custom directive and custom filter. So with that session, we'll done with Angular and then we'll move back to our HTML5 and CSS. And um, I took more time on AngularJS because it's a very popular framework and I'm pretty sure if you join anything, the experience of this framework will help to work on another framework and most of the companies work on AngularJS. So if you work on AngularJS, this also will be a benefit for you guys. Uh, any questions you guys can ask anytime or you can go through the session again. You can ask me a question on the next session as well. And thank you all for joining our today's session. Uh, have a good day. Good night. Thank <laughs> you.